In recent months, the LGBTQ community has found itself at the center of a political battle with legislation being pursued by conservative lawmakers across the country. One of the most targeted groups of this recent onslaught has been the transgender community. Joining us today, Treandre Valentine, the executive director of the Massachusetts Transgender Political Coalition, an organization that has been advocating for and providing essential resources to transgender people across the Commonwealth for over 20 years, and Dallas Dukar, a board member of the GLBTQ Legal Advocates and Defenders, also known as GLAD. She uh, also is as well uh, CEO of Trans Health Northampton and a faculty member at Northeastern University, Columbia University, and the University of Virginia School of Medicine, just to name a few. Good afternoon. Thank you both for being here today. Uh, Dallas, I'd like to start with you. The Parental Rights and Education Bill, or as it's more commonly referred to as the Don't Say Gay Bill, which has recently been signed into law by Governor Ron DeSantis, it stipulates a prohibition on classroom instruction and discussion about sexual orientation and gender identity from kindergarten through third grade. In, in your opinion, how is this law damaging to children who identify as LGBTQ or children who may be confused about their gender or sexual identity? Well, thank you so much. You know, the Don't Say Gay law or Don't Say Trans law is really getting a lot of attention and it's incredibly harmful. It's really seeking to erase identity, seeking to erase conversations about being LGBTQ. And unfortunately, this is just one of many. There's over 280 laws across the country that are being advanced that are anti-LGBTQ. So, you know, this is really unprecedented. And, you know, many of these bills really do create a more hostile school environment specifically for LGBTQ students. Laws like Florida's Don't Say Gay or Trans are really about censoring what kids can be able to talk about in the first place. You know, it, it aims at uh, trans youth and really requires teachers to disrespect names, disrespect pronouns, and really also can out students before they're ready, right? Uh, it, this is really about safety. This is also really about creating an environment where a child can be able to express themselves. And instead, this law restricts the ability for the individual to actually be themselves. Uh, it can restrict their ability to use the bathroom, and it can really restrict participa participation in other events, things like sports, social activities, Etc. Right? Dallas, this is Dallas really what, harmful. what what recourse though do LGBTQ families have against this law? What's what's the current classroom policy on this subject in the in the Commonwealth? Well, you know, right now in the Commonwealth, transgender individuals and LGBTQ people in general are protected against discrimination, right? And you know, students are able to right now under the law freely be able to express themselves, express their identity, and be able to participate in sports, in different classroom activities, and not be added without their consent. And that is hugely protective because it creates a safe space for students to be able to be themselves, especially many students mm -hmm. might not even be able to be themselves at home, right? It actually allows school to be a place of learning. Treandre, the MTPC has launched an initiative called the Identity Document Assistance or IDA Network. Can you explain for us what it does and why it's so important to the transgender community here in Massachusetts? Absolutely. So the Identity Document Assistance Network or IDA, um, will, we are, we are um, partnering with a local trans-led business called Namesake. And this partnership came about through MTPC's 2019 Community uh, Needs Assessment Survey. And when we asked folks about their legal concerns, the top legal concern they had was ID documents, that they weren't matching who they were, right? And so, um, we wanted to provide a platform that was accessible to folks uh, in our communities. Um, not everybody needs uh, an attorney's assistance for this process. Um, 
So while we will be connecting people to legal counsel and legal representation, most of the folks who um, who want to change their ID documents don't necessarily need it, but it's mm -hmm. a overwhelming and can be a complicated process for people. Um, overwhelming because, you know, navigating legal systems is, can be very scary. Sure. Um, and if you may have been born in a different state or a different country, things can be a little bit more complicated. So this just so makes it one, a little bit easier, make things a little bit easier. Dallas, um, the University of Pennsylvania transgender swimmer Leah Thomas recently won a national championship in the 500 yard freestyle event. Many, including several female swimmers, swimmer who also participated in that tournament, have argued that Leah's participation was unfair and that transgender people should not be allowed to compete in college sports. And in fact, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis tweeted about it, saying, uh, by allowing men to compete in women's sports, the NCAA is destroying opportunities for women, making a mockery of its championships and perpetuating a fraud. In Florida, we reject these lies and recognize Sarasota's Emma Wayant as the best women's swimmer in the 500-yard freestyle. So what is GLAD's stance on this issue? Well, you know, the NCAA has really worked for many years to ensure policies that ensure a level playing field for all athletes who really train hard and can meet the, you know, real requirements to compete fairly. And what I think is really important to note is that the NCAA has had a history of thinking about the overall respect and safety in which all athletes are treated. For instance, they've made decisions in the past not to hold champions in different states that have passed laws that directly harm trans people. And it's really something that the NCAA leadership can also consider now, especially as we see so many harmful bills passing and including these bills that are excluding life-saving health care, forcing teachers to really, really misgender students or exclude trans girls in elementary school activities and participating in, in sports with their peers. So really, at the end of the day, the NCAA can continue to follow their stance and we can really focus on the issues that matter, which are these bills that are preventing mm -hmm. kids from being able to live a healthy life. Trey Andrea, we have about 45 seconds left. The last question to you. The MTPC has started something called the Trans Leadership Academy, the purpose of which is to alleviate major hurdles that disproportionately affect the trans community, hurdles like unemployment, poverty, homelessness. Why are these issues so prevalent in the trans community? And uh, how is MTPC been working to change things? Through this workforce uh, development program, we will be providing community counseling, support, um, skill building, uh, networking with uh, employers so that uh, our community, our community members can develop a career or a life plan with clear attainable goals um, so that they can really uh, not only survive but thrive because a lot of our folks have been forced to do survival economy and we're really trying to alleviate those economic instabilities. All right, Trey Andre Valentine and Dallas M. Dukar. Thanks to you both for joining us. Up next, politics is not the only place where the trans community is gaining visibility. From Laverne Cox to MJ Rodriguez, trans actors have been receiving accolades. Next, trans actor Travis Alabanza talks about their new one-person show in Boston, Burgers, a powerful and humorous identity reclamation story.